For the first time in a long while, I feel truly confident in where I'm going. What I'm doing. With you, I mean. I'm so rarely sure of anything. Not the least when it comes to the grand affairs of gods and kith. But you always seem so certain. Somehow you know what must be done and you don't hesitate. I admire that. That's precisely what I mean. I don't know that I could trust myself with the decisions you're making. My own brief time hunting the leaden key has taught me there's nothing enviable about the position you're in. And yet you've borne it well. That's what duty is, isn't it? Simply doing what must be done. Perhaps what I mean is, if we must be caught between the gods and the wheel, then I'm glad you're on our side. That means a lot. Thank you. Well, that was unexpected, but not unwelcome. And I've come to care for you. I've always been solitary by nature. It's been a relief to let my guard down with you, though. I've spent most of my life hiding parts of myself, my name, my identity, my awakening, from everyone else. I'm not sure I know another way. After living with Isilmir for so long, I've come to value privacy. The space to think and reflect in solitude. Think of her as an intrusive neighbor. Not always present, but rarely far away. Still, she's the least of my concerns. I don't know where exactly our journeys will take us. Or what will happen when we find Aethys. I don't want to make a commitment to you that I can't honor, and I certainly don't want to deceive you about my intentions. Yes, I like the sound of that. Ado, I hear you witnessed an unfortunate exchange behind the Adra Mill. You kept Lara and Orso from the beyond. We could use such a mediator. Martina has need of muscle and brains outside of the Valera house. I will entertain your curiosity. Ach, the Bardato Bank shut us out of investments and stifles our finances. This is the richest prospect on Iora, but we cannot grow our family business. Can't make coin at the expense of others? Now that's a crying shame. If you know a better way of squeezing profit out of these islands, I'm open to hearing it. Ezali is a rich thug, and someday she will get what's coming to her. If we must. What is it? Shoddery. Our disagreements are beyond the point of shaking hands. This is not your field. If anything, I question her interest. Hmm. You have little to gain by peace between our families. But you speak as if you might. You want to help? Convince Azali to negotiate. She ignores my invitations. Until then, leave me be. Laro has returned to the estate intact. Belfetto. Too much Bardato blood has been spilled in the name of Vengiata. Ak, nothing has been solved, only delayed. Here, for your discretion. There can be no peace while civilized kith turn on each other. Would that scandal and bloodshed kept their distance from my house? You saw my son dueling with the Valera boy. At least he survives to learn from his mistakes. When Valera and Bardato cross each other, only blood and sorrow remain. Perhaps in time, if Great Wodica judges us worthy of supporting the company, word has spread fast about the little spectacle at the dogs. You've certainly caught everyone's attention. Perhaps the Watcher of Cagnua and House Bardato 
can help one another. Queen's Beth whispers of a Valera plot against my family. Something grander than pointless jewels. You are a newcomer to the Deadfire, uniquely positioned to loosen Valera tongues. Zilli Valera strums a lute by the watchtowers, a meek-tempered boy, fonder of song and drink than the family business. He might spill something of his family's affairs. Then I will sleep better at night. My hopes do not hinge on being proven right at every turn. The governor is interested in how much luminous Adra we can export. Nothing else matters. To that end, I look forward to the day when we won't need Valera thugs backing our interests. You do that. Consider my offer. Because we do not belong in the same business, the Valeras are opportunists reaping the rewards of happenstance. They're little better than the pirates they're charged with slaying. Batello doesn't make my affairs any easier with his wayward ambitions. His brood threatens open bloodshed in the streets and he thinks... Delusional little snake. Fine. But you can assure him that I won't be alone. Go on then. Let him know before I change my mind. And I must entertain them? Go on. Ado, what brings you to the Hall of the Valeres? You really managed to convince that stubborn Pugra to show up. I... I'll make sure the estate is prepared to receive her, then. I will send a messenger to fetch Azali. Whether she is still receptive to the idea of a truce is ultimately up to her. You run your bank like a crime syndicate. Some of us struggled to tell the difference. We can take it up with the director any time you feel like explaining why your children are intimidating my merchants. I see our would-be mediator has arrived. Well, we're here. I hope this wasn't some elaborate, ill-advised jest. I would not willingly welcome a Bardato beneath my roof for the sake of a jest. As long as the Valera remembers his place, we shouldn't have any problems. My place is in the dueling ring. Care to let the gods decide, Lady Baldato? Quiet, Martino. Watch her. Now would be the time to lay out your reasoning. Ach, raise the stir in the White March Mountains. The same could be done here. A force? Watcher? To what end? Akara, but these sharks are no sympathetic audience. I know well enough, Gaul. Atello, I hadn't realized you had a soft spot for the natives. My goal? To wring out a little respect from this feud before we go under. The company will bleed us dry. We give our lives, our loved ones lives, and they don't lift a finger to help us. The Bardatas turn their backs. Why shouldn't I teach my children to walk with their heads high? One does not arm the competition. Besides, lesser people have made more of themselves without the aid of banks. Vagabonds. 
The only thing I'll say for Otello is that he is a son of the Republic's. I'll treat him like any enemy of note. I'm amazed you can say this with a straight face, Azali. Once you own the castle, things change. What else? We turned up and proved you didn't need ten generations of inbreeding to get the job done. And the Bardatos took offense. It suits you to play the slighted paupers, doesn't it? Atello Valera insulted me to the governor's face. His son maimed one of my guards. I tired of their play at innocence. I have raised up my family through effort and sacrifice. Yes. Yes, I do. They are possible sailors. Of course, but... I want the Principi out of the trade lanes. What? Half of this month's shipments are missing. I'll give you coin and crew for five ships to earn back my investment. Six ships. With six, I will drive the Principi from these waters like rats from a fire. Six ships. I believe we just made a deal, Valera. Then it's settled? So it seems, for the time being. Time will tell if this arrangement is a favorable one. My hosts, you'll excuse me if I return home. With our new capital, the fleet can be fully restored by month's end. Here, you may count yourself as one of the family. That grants you the right to display it. Better that the Valeras run our fleet against the rocks than suffer peace with our enemies. If the Bardatos want our protection, they will have to deal with us on fairer terms. Some meager consolation there. If the Bardatos are serious about financing our repairs, then the Valeras will be back at sea in no time. From there we do what we do best. Hunting Principi boats and waving at the crew as they sink. Is drama an acceptable answer? Makara, most definitely. Gelarde, then I swim in the same waters as my fish friend. I make sure the wine cellar is stocked and that sons and daughters alike know how to carry a blade.
It is the light that has led you here. Shodi, I do hope you are not getting into trouble now. Who, me? <laughs> no, I wouldn't dream of it. Uh-huh. How might I help you now? Oh, yes. People are afraid. Angry. Change can be frightening. But what did any of us come here for, if not a new beginning? No more than anywhere else. No sense fighting it. The water sustains our faith, surely as it does these trees. Gone's the only one that matters. <laughs> the Shining God's got many faces, but they're all his to wear. Divine King Widewin, he saw the dawn stars, telling him of things to come. But it's gone, with Sickle and Lantern, that's come to the dead fire. Our God's returned, and he's gonna bring balance to the world. He's gonna right all the wrongs we have suffered. Gone will bring a new beginning, for all of us, when that hour comes. <sighs> Nothing like a homecoming to make a girl remember her roots, even if they are dried up and half dead. Sometimes, I wonder if my brethren don't think I got black ichor running in my veins. Suppose they do. Suppose sometimes people do bad things in the name of their gods. But my brethren do more good than bad. And more good than most. Besides, I often don't understand you, Watcher. But I ain't afraid of you. Is it? <laughs> Sakes alive. You shouldn't be so fine to me, Watcher. Makes me think untoward things. Gives me notions I don't need to be getting. I can't risk straying when I got a duty to gone. Yeah. Lay it on me. I was born to reap souls and lead them to the light. Now with Aethys dead, in these dire visions, I think I need to shield them from a hell gone dark. But the more I gather, the more my mind turns to tatters. <sighs> that ain't gonna happen. You'd ask me to turn my back on my god? Why do you think the God of Rebirth held an aspect of death within him? You can't have life without dying. There ain't no beginning without a prior ending. Ain't no day without night. No spring without fall. You can't grow crops if you never harvest for seeds. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. I've done this before, but never with such a full lantern. You may want to stand back. The, uh... Experience can be somewhat intense. <sighs> Don't know if I feel cleaner, but I feel something. Blessed, for sure. Let's just hope it lasts. Cause my lantern feels as heavy as ever, full to brimming with essence, like dark water spilling over my mind. All right, I'll be right behind you. A vast and flogging fuck, Captain. You eyeing that fry shat bear paws lump of lumber yonder? That be the misery's delight, Malnage's pus stuffed canker of a boat. Malnage be up in Romaro's head, or I've never had a roll on the waves. She finds him for us. She'll sink him soon as sighted. Come on, Captain. Now, what can I do for you? Hey, fish boy. what I tell you last time? You're not allowed in here. Akara, have we met? 
Oh, have you forgotten our little altercation so soon? How convenient for you. Last you were here, you got drunk as a hagfish in a barrel of mead. Akira, at least one of us is amused. Then, when I refused to serve you any longer, you stole a bottle of my finest wine from behind the bar. If that was his finest, I say it was charity. You drank it all, then clambered onto the stage, pushed the dancer off, and serenaded the crowd with a sloppy rendition of my Wahaki. Clamber? <laughs> These legs do not clamber. Apologize. Then, when I shoved you out the door and told you not to come back, you tried to kiss me. Frankly, I'm surprised someone hasn't killed you yet. Oh, you and me, lad. We'll be spending our next shore leave together. But leave you me. All right. But if he gets up to any more mischief, it's your purse on the line. Akira, punish me appropriately if I misbehave. I'll hold you to that, you slippery bastard. Please, I must ask a favor. What say? Do you have business with the Valian Trading Company? My people are the Duape. We signed a contract with the company. We were not understanding the terms at the time. I wish to, what say, renegotiate. But the clerks turned me away. My father, the Ranga, took payment from the company. In exchange, they dig for Audra. He did not understand the Valian way. When he dies, the Outlanders will claim our island for themselves. A cruel practice, I say. And they call us savages. Ngati's Chosen speaks the wisdom of his mother. Father has fallen ill, and the clerk, Luca, stands by the agreement as surely as if it was stamped in his skin. Akira, already this treatment is not so unusual. I made my appeals to Luca, but my words were as stones dropped down the deepest well. While I am barred from the company office, I can do nothing for my people. Akira, my thanks. I will remain here by day until justice is done. Ado Watcher, the Cantoni Chesi sent for me. It seems the Republics have need of me again, thanks to you. Do you have need of me? Good. Welcome back to the office, Sere. Ado, Luca. If you or your friend have business with the company, I am disposed to listen. The servers at the tavern are clumsy. Most clumsy, indeed. Ack, a lawful claim, I might add. No matter what the native says to the contrary. He showed up with a forged contract, as if I wouldn't know the difference between our paperwork and theirs. Tawenu is lucky I only seized the forgery. The Galid is too good for his kind. Sientere, it's no surprise the little cheat is an accomplished liar. I keep his cheap forgery locked in my chest. <laughs> it's good for the occasional laugh. Ecosi. You have business here? You are in luck. The governor is between meetings. Go on in. The Watcher. From the palace, yes? You made quite the impression on the Cantonicesi. He went on for ages. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable. I am Nueva Alvari, governor in residence of the Valian Trading Company here in Nekataka. What brings you to my door? 
generous of him. I am a little surprised he gave you up, to be honest. His operations on Port Magé must be going more smoothly than reported. I do have work if you want it, but I think Director Castol has some interest in speaking with you directly. Best you see him first. You can find his office upstairs. Ack, uh, just a moment. There we are. So, did Alvari send you? I'm putting together the numbers. She will have to be patient. Well, you're no clerk. Uh, Sientere, watcher. I was preoccupied. Uh, do not take it personally. They put me in this side office for a reason. Oleska Sarasso, advisor. And you are the watcher that frightened the harbor master. Uh, did you get turned around? I can't imagine what you'd want from me. I will not lie. Our fortunes dwindle. I must ask the director for some clarity on these figures. I cannot imagine why they are so low. What can I do for you today, Watcher? Put plainly, I am an advisor to the director. I keep the books in order and offer advice on the operations of the fleet. Profits, losses, all here. I have a better head for numbers than for small talk, I'm afraid. It isn't personal. It is nice to be asked, I suppose. I hardly ever get anyone in here unless they need help with their sums. That is true, but hardly anyone says so. I have been lucky to reach this position. I enjoy the work, and it is clear that I am needed. Being useful, it is a good feeling. I can spare a few moments. She's nice, no? A little intense, maybe. She gets results. Always to the letter. Well, it is funded and so controlled by the Songretta Mea Compresa. I can tell you that much. A council of eleven investors. Dukes, nobles, not all from the Republic's mind, but all very important people. While the Songreta is away, Canta Nero is the company's highest authority on the island, but he mainly concerns himself with diplomatic affairs. For the usual business, you want the director. Ah, Watcher. This is a timely visit. I was just going over the reports. You have quite the history. I was hoping to get an opportunity to meet with you in person. Watchers are not so plentiful as you might expect here in the Dead Fire. Cantanero was very interested to hear what might have happened in her song. Such events will only increase tensions between the companies, which makes our work here all the more pressing. And I think that we are, each of us, in a position to offer each other something that we cannot find elsewhere. The Valian Trading Company has had a presence on this island for nearly a century now. We have the greatest fleet on the seas, the support of the richest men and women in the world. What can the Royal Deadfire Company offer? A soldier's wages, so that you can elevate the fortunes of a distant king? And the queen? A place in the Kahanga tribe among all the rest of these neglected people. You've lived outside the caste system all these years. Are you eager to return to it? I can give you money, fame, certainly. But the men and women of the company, we set our aims high. And if I only wanted to offer you work as an Adra inspector, I would have let Alvari deal with you. Yes, of course. But consider the luminous Adra is only valuable because of what it can offer those who consume it. The Valian Trading Company has maintained an outpost here in Nekataka for nearly a century now. It was only two years ago that we discovered the effects of luminous Adra with the aid of our Anamancers and several Watchers. 
Flaune Alet has continued to study the potential of Luminous Adra in all manner of advances. Why content ourselves to sell all this Adra as a luxury when we might use it to change the world? But of course you understand all of this. Alet sent word of your involvement in her latest experiment. A very dramatic first attempt, I hear. Though, uh, Alette has a tendency to gloss over details. But, uh, I want to hear it from you. How did it go? Oh, it wouldn't work for me, I think, but... Ak, I take your meaning. More dangerous than expected, yes? I hope Alette paid you well for your trouble. A small comfort, but... You'll return from your adventure a little wealthier, at least. We are in the early days of Alette's research. Flawed as this outing was, there is promise there. This is only the start, you know. The very dawn of a new age of discovery. But just imagine. Imagine if we could transport goods and people more quickly than any vessel or horse. Cure every kind of ailment. Perhaps cure disease altogether. We'll extend our lifespans by decades, maybe even centuries one day. This has all been the work of a single outpost. I want there to be a dozen outposts, a hundred. Animancers working together to better our lives. Look at what we have left behind. Old Velia is a battlefield at constant war with itself. But the Republics have risen from that past. We can rise farther still. And in doing so, we will raise all of Aora with us. Belfetto! Yes, but achievable, I think. I may not live to see it, but I will see the groundwork done. But uh, I've said enough. Too much, I think. There will be more experiments to come. Until then, I have a more grounded task I need assistance with. Nothing that should put your spirit in any danger. <laughs> Nekataka sees its share of smuggling. I doubt that would surprise anyone. But we've learned of our particular exchange that will have more dire effects than a few spoiled Hawana peasants. There is a Royal Deadfire Company official by the name of Quarno who has been meeting in secret with one of the Principi. I do not believe he works with the approval of his masters. He meets with a Captain Tola, a known pirate and smuggler. I hope I don't have to tell you that an alliance between a crooked royal official and the Principi is not the kind of trouble any of us need. I have a woman, Britza, waiting in the luminous bathhouse in Periki's Overlook. The smugglers do business there, and she has kept an eye on things. I promise to send assistance. Find her, and she will tell you what she knows. It may surprise you, but the royal spy master and I are not on very good speaking terms. I prefer to handle these matters internally. You provide a good opportunity. Of course, best to go in prepared. A fine Valian woman. Steady temperament. Good sense. The bathhouse sees an enormous number of patrons every day. It is a useful place to have a set of eyes and ears on hand. The discipline of the royal officers isn't really what any of this is about. I'm more concerned about the pirates. In this particular case, the companies share an enemy. Only that Tola is a captain of middling repute and some small ambition. I expect she feels that a partnership with Quarna will give her an edge. Britza will know more. Excellent. Meeting you has been a stroke of luck, Watcher. I'll await your report. Well met, stranger. Akira, but isn't this district a fine place? I am not one meant to venture far from the gullet. Until recently, I... I had a respectable job at the Luminous Bathhouse. Now that I am unemployed, I seek to make myself useful before the money runs out. 
And I must return to the Roparu as a pauper. A wonderful place. Would that I could cross its threshold again and feel the mist of luminous waters. In spite of my time there, I cannot do else but give it my highest recommendation. You will find the luminous bathhouse in Periki's Overlook. The Queen granted this area of the city to the Valian outsiders. Here they organized their business and trade, digging up the archipelago with both hands and carrying riches overseas. It is a fair characterization. In her welcoming embrace, the Queen allowed a similar concession to the Royal Deadfire Company. You would do well to see as much of Nekataka while you are here, I am thinking. More happens at the bathhouse than cleanliness and ease. It is a place of meetings, business, and transactions, to all of which the attendants are either blind or deaf. One day, I overheard more than I ought to have. In my airing, I gasped. To my great shame, I showed a most unprofessional reaction before clients. I was fired, and rightly so. Hold up, Cap. That be Malnaj, the High Queen Sea Devil of the Dead Fire itself, awaiting us like a shark in eight. Always, Cap. Captain, I've heard a mess and a half about you. Mostly good. Though I see your taste in company could use some refining. Typical, Molnage. Can't match my skill, so you try to spew shit. Boy, when you're as old as me, your skill will still be naught more than the untrained fumbling of an Adiran maid to the refined workings of my mind. I've heard about your run-ins with Captains Benweth and Ferrante. Meeting the old principe seems like. Almost makes a girl green, the envy of missing the party. I'm tracking a man by the name of Romaro, traitor to the cause. Romaro ain't no traitor, you mind-blind sack of squid squirts. Captain, there'll be a bounty of some 4,000 pounds on Romaro, quick or dead. I'd be willing to cut you a tenth of that, here and now, if you give me any knowledge you might have stumbled across on your travels. Eh, yeah, we're worth a try, Cap. Careful, Watcher. You don't want to go making yourself an enemy of the Principe Sen Petrena. Anyone aids our enemies shares their fate, you know? Fare thee well, Captain. See you around, Seraphon. <laughs> 